Hello, so let's go ahead and implement uh, this uh, iteration 5. For we first we start by adding a counter to correct answers. So this will be in the main screen controller and this will be needed in both check answer where it will be updated as well as play game. So it needs to have the scope of the entire class. So uh, we come here on the top. You can do it anywhere. I like to keep them all together. So I'll come and say uh, this will change. So we'll use var not let. And then we'll say correct answer counter. And it's an integer. And we'll initialize it to zero. This one will also need to be reset when the game uh, is reset. So in the reset game, we need to reset the correct answer counter, correct answer counter, and back to zero. Not in the turn, but in the reset game. Then we go to the check answer. If the answer is correct, increment the correct answer. So I say correct answer counter equal correct answer counter plus one. I can also replace this since I'm incrementing by one. There is an operator instead of using the plus and the equal, there is an operator that can replace all of this, which is plus plus. So I can say correct answer counter plus plus, which is the same as correct answer counter equal counter plus one. Then come here in the else, we'll need to calculate the score. The score is going to be needed in the update stats as well. Uh, and I can, I can pass it on or I can, make, I can make the score as a class variable or since it's going to only be needed in uh, the stats, uh, I can pass it on to the stat uh, as a variable. Let's, let's not add it here as a class variable and pass it on to update stats. So first, before we go to the alert, uh, we calculate the score. So calculate the score. So we'll say that uh, uh, we, can, we define a score variable. Uh, so we'll say let score equal. And the score is the correct answer counter divided by the maximum turns. The challenge with that is that the correct answer counter is an integer, the maximum turns in an integer. So when you say 1 over 3, uh, actually we can multiply this by 100. Um, uh, we said we're going to do that uh, 100 and then you divide by the maximum turns. So that will give you the percentage. Uh, this will, uh, in fact, calculate it as integer and, and it will drop any decimal numbers will be so this result in the score will be an integer which is fine with us we can keep it this way um, in the analysis i thought it will be a float uh, because the correct answer and maximum turns will be divided and it's a decimal division but now it occurred to me i can multiply by a hundred here so i will avoid that decimal division and keep everything integer so now calculated the score, I need to display that here. So instead of saying game is over, I can display the score. So uh, I'll probably, you can, uh, game is over, and I can say your score is, and use this the uh, string interpolation to incorporate the value of the score in here. So this is the score, and I did something, again, is the convention, by the way, I used capital S for the score. Uh, well, I'm, I'm defining it as, as a constant. It's only going to be initialized. It's not going to be changed, so that, that is fine. But you want to uh, use a lowercase. Um, I'm not going to change, so I don't confuse you, but in the future, remember to use a lowercase. Uh, this is uh, too much of a string to be included in alert. You may want to define a string variable and put it there makes it easier if you want to change it in the future. But for now, it, it's working. It is good. So that will display to you the score. Before we go to update the stats, let's test it. So we run 
the app and, and test uh, the score. So we start again. Let's have a long answer. Let's have a correct answer. Another correct, incorrect answer. So the score should come as 33 and here it is 33. Let's uh, run again with all incorrect. So the score should be zero. Now let's run with all correct. So the score should be 100. So the score is going as bland and the function is working as correct. You may say, well, I no longer need this uh, uh, log. You can remove it, and you, you definitely need to remove it before you uh, submit the application or turn in the application. Uh, now we need to update the stat. So I can do that here in the end of the game or make a function for it. Since the, it is involved, it is better to make a function. So I'll say update stats. And we'll define an argument for the score. So I'll say an argument uh, variable. I'm going to call it a score and I'm going to give it the type integer. So whoever needs to use the update stats uh, will need to pass it a variable, a value of type integer. The stats will put it in a variable, uh, a local memory called the score and will use it. So after the alert is displayed, I'll say update the stats. So I'll call the update stats method and pass to it the score. So the score variable that I created in, in this instructions as a result of this arithmetic operation, which results in a type int, um, will be copied. Uh, a copy, a memory copy of it will be made and update stats will receive that copy and then update stats names it a score with a lowercase s. You can name it anything, but know that these are two distinct copies. So now in the update stats, I need to retrieve all the stats, update based on recent game, then save the stats again. Save the new stats. To retrieve it, uh, I need first to retrieve the reference to the user default object. So I'll say let, and I'm going to call it uh, shared object. The library is called NS user defaults. And it has a function called standard user defaults. That function returns the shared default object. And you can learn more by reading about the uh, NS user defaults. Remember, the more you read about these libraries, the more you become strong in uh, app development. So we'll get the shared object, then we retrieve the highest score. So I'll uh, say let highest score equal and then I'll say shared object dot integer for key. Now this is our first time building it but the first time the app runs there will be no uh, highest score in the shared object so it will give you back zero which is correct before any games are played all the stats will be zero, which is fine. So you need to provide a name. And um, and this is, if you go back to our uh, conversation earlier about this shared object, what it does, it creates like a table, the name and the value. So the name is called key and the value is the value. So you, you provide a string will be which will be used to name or to key each value. 
and this is how the object can distinguish between one value and the other it's like a dictionary type if you did if you go back to the advanced video from uh, module 3 uh, we learned a little bit about dictionary so I'm gonna call them with the name highest score now this key is critical and it's case sensitive whatever you name has to be the one you use when you save it and the one we use when we retrieve it from the stats uh, control we'll do the same for the lowest score shared object dot integer for key if the type was float not integer there is another function called the float for key and this should be uh, your correct uh, lowest score and I don't need to retrieve the current to score or the recent to score because this is going to be overridden but I need to retrieve the number of games so I'll say shared object integer and number of games so I retrieved all the stats now I need to update them to update on the highest score I only do this if I scored higher so we'll say if the score we have now this score is greater than the highest score if that is true then assign highest score to highest score oh uh, so I want to assign so that I cannot use let for all of those see what happened here I used the let thinking that I'm not really going to change them and I don't know why I did that maybe uh, but Xcode caught it and said you use the let to define it which means you want it to be constant so you can't come and reassign it so I need to change all of the uh, highest to score lowest to score uh, and the number of games from let to var so that it can change then I need to update the number of games so I'll say number of games equal number of games plus one you can also use the increment operator I can also update the recent score so I can say let recent score equal the current score I don't need to do any testing then the last one is the lowest score so I say if a score is less than lowest score if that's the case then lowest score equal score there is one special case the very very first time in the very very first time the lowest score is zero right uh, the lowest score is zero and if the lowest score is zero nothing can be less than zero because the very first time there's no lowest score so it will be zero so if I played the game and I scored 30 the 30 will be my lowest score because it's my first game but if you try to compare 30 less than zero this will always be false so we need to add another condition you can add another condition by making another if statement so I can come here and say if if and here I'm checking that the number of games is one if the number of game is one well, because I already incremented it so it was zero then I incremented it so it became one so if the number of game is one then by default the lowest score equal score regardless of the comparison because in the if the number of games is one this is your first game lowest score is zero so you just assign it without the comparison you can also take that condition because you know whatever inside that if statement is the same as the other one so do I really need to do use two if statements can I just combine the conditions yes so this is one condition a score less than lowest score you can combine the condition with something called or and the or is this straight line and then you put the second condition equal one so now I have two conditions if the first condition is true or the second condition is true this will be executed 
Only if both of them are false that this will not be executed. There is another operator that can combine conditions called AND. And the AND is the uh, two ampersands. And the AND means that both conditions need to be true in order for the true block to be executed. So now I updated all of them. So time to save the new stats. So now back to the shared object and I say set integer for key. So now here I'm, I'm saving it. So that in the very first time that will be the setting. So I say the first integer I want is the highest score. And what's my key has to be exactly the same as the key I used earlier. Otherwise it will bring back zero. And likewise, do for the lowest score. The order doesn't matter. Uh, so do whatever you want. And then we'll say number of games. And number of games. The recent score is the one that I'm setting for the first time. So that will be... Uh, actually, I didn't really need to define a recent score here because I can just put a score um, and then I call this here recent score. So this step was really unnecessary. I didn't need to do that. Uh, I can take it out uh, because I, I can use this score directly in, in, in the saving. Uh, this one is not needed. So that gives us uh, the update in the update stats. And will leave us with only one thing, which is the stat screen. So this is done. This is done. This is done. So to the stats screen, I need to add a label. And I need to construct in the view did load. So back to the main storyboard. And I probably don't need the output window now. Bring the utility area. And I don't need this output. And I want to go to my stats view controller. Add a label in here give it the width and the height suitable for four lines uh, increase the number of lines to four i don't need this label i want to change the color to blue and everything stays the same is fine with me then i need to make this an outlet so i can change its text so add the uh, system editor i don't need the output area uh, and this is the stats. Make sure it is the stats view controller. It will come automatic because that's what it's linked to. And then connect the label stats as an outlet. And that will uh, do. So then back to the single uh, view. And now I move to the stats view controller. I don't need this navigation same as in the help view. In the view did load, that's what it is. So I'm done here with adding the label. I need to retrieve, retrieve the stats and create the message and set the label to the message. To, so three steps. Retrieve the stats from the user defaults object. Um, create a string uh, text with uh, the display message and then set the text of the label to the display message. As I mentioned earlier, you can use four labels if you want. So here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just using one because I want to show you how you can set up the text message. So we retrieve the shared object. We'll follow the same steps that I did in the view controller update stats. Let shared object. You can name it anything you want. Um, and this will be ns user defaults dot standard user defaults. Then I get each of the data. And I'm not changing them here so I can use let. So highest score equal shared object dot integer for key. And the key is highest score. Make sure the key is the same. Otherwise, it will be, uh, you will get a zero. You're not going to get an error, but uh, it will not find anything, so it will give you zero. And let 
the uh, recent score equal shared object dot integer full key recent score and then finally number of games equal shared object dot integer full key and number of games now that I got all of them create the string so I'll say uh, variable uh, message equal and I'll say highest score equal and then incorporate the highest score value and add a new line. To add a new line you use a slash n that's a format specifier as well and then I can incorporate so I can do message equal whatever inside message plus now the second one so lowest score equal and a new line then another one you, you don't have to break it down like this you can keep writing after the end so for instance I can say recent score equal and then bring in the recent score then the slash n and you can keep typing so I can say the uh, total games played equal and then bring in the number of games and it's not helping me because I didn't have uh, the closing so it doesn't know what I want to do number of games and um, and that's it so now finally I say label stats the text equal message so that completes this part so are you anxious to test it so let's go ahead So you can stats first, everything is zero because nothing is there. Let's play a game. Let's do a mix, maybe a 33, so that we can see that the lowest score will be updated. Oops, I didn't mean to answer. That's good, so we can see uh, lowest score changing. So here my score is 66. Go to the stats, you played one game, and the highest is 66, lowest is 66, and the recent is 66. So let's go play another one with one correct answer this time. And now it is 33, so my highest should not change. My lowest now changed, and now my recent is 33. So let's play one with uh, full correct answers. So the highest will change, the lowest doesn't change, and the recent is changing. So if I play another one with 66, like two correct answers, uh, the highest and the lowest will not change. So the highest stays the same, the lowest and the recent, and then I play it four times. If you want to like separate them, you can add other lines, but you need to change the number of lines as well. So that takes care of this uh, uh, stats. Now there are some, uh, and that, that works fine if the user does exactly what you want them to do. And not something about users is that you should not build the software assuming that the user will do exactly what you want them to do. Uh, for instance, there is uh, the user can click. Um, now we don't have a game being played. Um, the user may not start the game, they can click one of those, which basically messes up all our operation in here. Or they can start a game, and they can click start a game again in the middle, 
and keep clicking that and keep resetting the game. So we don't want to allow the user to do this. Uh, to prevent the user from this change, uh, one of the enhancements we wanted to do is that if the game is start, number one, until the sound is played, none of these buttons should be active. The user should not be able to click on, if any, on any of these buttons unless uh, a sound is being played. And uh, the second is once the user starts the game, they should not be able to start the game again. Uh, so that button should go inactive until uh, the user, until the game is over. So we'll do these two enhancements in the next video.